were you aware before the match of who the last that had been 26 years since a left-hander had won the U.S. Open? <laughs> well, you told me before the match. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to put a little pressure yeah, on him. No, you did. <laughs> so your plans are now, let, let me ask you one other question, because I've heard you often say that you can't compare yourself to Roger Federer, that you say that um, he's a much better player and that there's no point in even discussing it. Now, let's be truthful here at Nike Town. Before you leave New York, you've had an incredible run. You don't really believe that, right? <laughs> I believe, I believe, yeah. <laughs> I believe that, yeah. I think, first thing, we will see what happens when I finish my career. That's the first part, but right now I think it's nothing to compare with Roger. Now, 16 Grand Slams, I have nine, and his records being number one, and his unbelievable records. 23 semifinals in Grand Slam in a row, that's something almost impossible to repeat. No? So I think he deserves right now to be to be the best and I'm gonna keep working hard to try to try to have my chances to keep being in the final rounds of the of the important tournaments. You really believe that? I believe I, I am sure of that. I don't believe. <laughs> Tell me about the match yesterday with Djokovic. It seemed like that was the best match you played the entire tournament. Yeah. You've been served ex exceptionally well in this tournament. First of all how do you, it seems like you improved your serve in two days. In two days, <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of people who would like to know, including myself, how that happened. I don't know, yeah, you know. One day came the inspiration before the tournament and I started to serve well. Yeah, two days before the tournament, you know, I, I was practicing on the center court and, you know, the center court always is a big win, unbelievable win there. And I, I was practicing against friend Juan Monaco, and I, when I was serving against the wind, it was very difficult for me to win the serve. So I, I said, well, I have to change something. So I started to change a little bit the grip, put the racket more continental, and after that the speed was higher. Always is a risk when you have a change like this two, two, two days before the tournament, but that's what I had to, to do if I really want to have any chance to to win here, so I did, it worked unbelievable, and yesterday match, uh, well, during all the tournament, the serve was the key, I think, because, the, well, without this serve, uh, I'm going to play with much pressure all the, all the matches and all the points with my serve, you know, without, with my, with, the, with that serve, when I, when I was returning, that I can play it more aggressive, with more calm, and especially yesterday, I think I played my best match in my career in the U.S. Open for sure. And always it was difficult for me to play well here, but uh, during this tournament, every day I did a little bit better. And the final, I played my best match. I'm very happy. You, you made some wonderful comments on 9-11 to the uh, people in the stands, and that was much appreciated. Well, Absolutely. That's, that's for sure. The, the minimum thing Yeah, it was um, terrible what happened a few years ago, so just... Remember that, that that victims are there. Remember for his families is the, the only thing I can say. And, yeah, and, and certainly it's difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people, I think, in Spain are struggling economically as well as the United States. Sure. But of course, when you went on the court as a tennis player, we we all have high expectations. And I'm wondering how you felt because it, you didn't seem to show it at all. The pressure that you must have been under trying to make history. You've now done something that only six other males have done in their entire lives, win the career Grand Slam. You, you did something the great Bjorn Borg, who you're often compared to, who was able to win on clay and win on grass, but not here at the Open. You did that. But people started talking about it. I assume that you believed that you could do it, but Tell, tell me emotionally how you were feeling as you got to this point where you were right there. Well, I think uh, it was for the last few years, uh, I didn't arrive to this tournament in 100% of conditions. One year, 2007, I had a problem on my knee. In 2008, I arrived at probably playing very well, but very tired from the Olympics. 
I need, last year I broke my abdominal before the tournament in Cincinnati, you know, so I always had problems in this tournament. And yeah, you know, uh, having always this pressure, but winning this tournament right now, don't wait. For example, if it pass one or two or three more years without winning this title, probably you get like an obsession and it's more difficult to do it after, no? So I did now, but right now I, I can come back every year more relaxed and can have more fun of, of every tournament. Well, I, I, I think I'm not the only one, but I sort of want to know this because I wasn't this way. How are you so damn humble, number one, and do you ever get pissed off? I mean, it's, um, you are so patient. I see you all the time at the U.S. Open, and um, you're always there talking with people and signing autographs and spending that extra time. And even now, you must be like, why is this old man asking me these boring <laughs> questions? I want to get the hell out of here and go home. No. And you never seem to get upset. And you, was, you are so gracious to everyone. Always Where does this come uh, from? Please tell me. Always a pleasure to be with you, John, and with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, that's the only thing that I can do, no? that people are there supporting me during all every day and waiting for an autograph or photograph no? so that's that's the normal thing to do that's my opinion <laughs> i told them to get a life sometimes i mean but then i came back the next uh, don't start don't that looks like me um, well um, i'm sorry did you finish your stuff did you want to add anything to what you said you just is this your fa uh, your uncle your parents um just the way you were brought up. I mean, I had good parents too, but I didn't have so good on the court. <laughs> well, probably it's part of the character, no? I'm sure that the family is very important. And in Mallorca, I think we are very relaxed. We're from, from an island and the, the life there <laughs> goes... The, the, the life there goes a little bit slower than, than, than here in New York. So for that reason, I think I am more relaxed on court than, than outside court, too. That may be a good... I, I know that there's some people want to ask you. I, I've got a, a couple questions before you go. Just the last couple ones from some of the fans here. Uh, one question. I don't have the names, but nice shoes. I heard a Facebook fan designed them. What do you think? Is that his shoes? What, what, are you, what are we talking about there? Uh, oh, these ones? Oh, these. Okay, maybe other these. Okay. They saw your shoes. Or, or mine. Are you talking about mine or his? I, I like your, I like uh, your ones. Yeah. These are new Nike style coming out yeah. the, for the senior store. 2015. <laughs> if you win in those, you really will be. If you're, you won't be humble if you win in these two. Okay, how will you celebrate? Sophie wants to know how will you celebrate this career Grand Slam achievement? Well, I'm gonna celebrate at home, for sure, with the family, but especially too with, with the friends. I like to go for a party too, the night. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't win last night because I didn't have the chance to do it, but for sure when I come back to Spain, I'm gonna do it. Is it true, because we live in America and New York has a pretty good nightlife, but is it true that in Spain, because we kid that d dinner starts at 11 or 12 and you're up 